What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Science channel, my name is Shanks and today we are going to play my third series in the BFME 1 patch 2.22 league, this time against Farad on the beautiful map Mering Stream. And of course, I will get to play with the Isengard faction. I mean, I'm pretty certain that this is not the greatest map for the evil factions just because, you know, the distance from the one castle to the other castle is kind of short. But maybe we can do some shenanigans, okay? I'm gonna go for the Uruk pit opening and recruit crossbowmen. That's my opening. And always pick War Chant. If you accidentally pick Palantir, sign out of the game. Just quit it. Just quit. Tell your opponent, I messed up. Please give me one more chance. Okay. So we're gonna capture this one in the front. And with the Uruks and Crossbowmen, we should have like a very strong early game. Because Crossbowmen deal great amount of damage to the Swordmen, Peasants, you know, Soldiers and Orcs. Where is he? Oh, it's it's Gondor. Okay. So, I mean, why don't I wall check it in the first place? I don't get it. <laughs> um, You know what? It might be a mistake that I captured the one in the front, guys. Not gonna lie. Like, it's hard to protect it against soldiers because they have the Elvin Wood. And my war chain is gonna be kind of meaningless. Watch this. He's gonna use it eventually. If you picked heal, it's gonna... Oh, never mind. If he would pick heal, it would be such a disastrous move from him. It's a very awkward situation. I need to get out of the land and war chant them. So they have the leadership. And now shoot. I mean, there is like 0% chance we can capture this. Like my start is actually kind of messed up. I should have captured the other mill, you know? Then I would have enough money to keep making more units. Because now I will lose this mill. And <laughs> my Uruk with this can't, can't produce any units at this point. And the Hobbit is so annoying, you know. I gotta let him do it, you know, because... Oh man, he's getting levels too. Are you kidding me? Not the best. Not the best start into the best of three series, boys. <laughs> Not the best start at all. I mean... Uh... And I will lose the settlement too. Oh boy. Actually, he didn't capture this one. I'm so poor. I'm so poor. And that's the reason... I like to open with double furnace with Isengard, you know? Then I have like good eco, even if I lose the outside settlements. I'm so broke in this game. Totally broke. Can I defend this? Come on, Uru. Oh, are you kidding me? They got level 2. Um, This... Is the worst possible outcome out of the situation you know why because i thought he's gonna use the hobbit to capture this settlement behind or, or you know down below and without his hobbit my crossbowman actually would deal much greater amount of damage but remember his hobbit pippin the full of a took himself was kind of focusing us down on you know all the time the crossbowmen are getting bullied by the hobbit and that's the main reason why we lost it i mean we could have maybe not saved the lumber mill but we could have definitely killed the soldiers that's certain if the Hobbit wouldn't be around. So it's a smart move from him. And a very bad move from me. I'm so poor. I'm so poor. I mean, it's going to be very difficult now, boys. Move! <laughs> Dude, they don't want to listen to me. I'm telling you. And he, made for the, he went for the barracks opening too. Which is not the worst thing in the world for me. Because I have not Uruk pit level 2 just yet. So I couldn't get any pikemen. So I'm fine with him getting soldiers instead of rushing the stables. But I think infantry is just overall better on this map, you know. It's not the biggest map, remember this. Like, what is the only benefit you get from the infantry? Uh, from the cavalry? It's the movement speed. So if the movement speed is only valuable, if the map is not big. If the map is big, sorry. We need, man. The Hobbit is so annoying. I saved my crossbow, man. Big move. <laughs> I mean... Um, I know how to win this, boys, okay? The way to win this is to hope that Farad is gonna lose his internet connection. So, 
That's for that reason I'm gonna play a little bit more. Otherwise, I would just sign out. I just messed up this one. The thing is, when you play evil faction, especially Isengard, or even also Mordor, is you have like a production building in your castle first. You actually heavily rely on resource income from outside of your castle, right? And without outside castle, you just... Outside settlements, I mean, you can't really you know, get money. And unlike Mordor, we have no units for free. We need to invest a lot of money for them. So I think that even more map control depending if you open with the Uruk pit. And this game going on for such a long time that he gets the chance to summon his Elven Wood, Elven Wood for the second time already. And he's spamming Swartman. So we need to kind of spam now Berserkers, you know. There's like a counter to Swartman. And we need to kind of find our way back into the game. Kill the Hobbit, please, Berserker. Armor it. Nice. Die, you full of a took. You caused me enough troubles in this game. No more, I'm telling you. No more. <laughs> All right. I mean, I would, I would love to go for Tainted Land. I would love to do this, but I can't. I need the industry so badly. I need it. Like, remember, if he, if he doesn't close the game and if I can keep, like, two, three settlements outside under my protection, then we should easily be able to get ourselves back into this game. Isengard's eco is going to be unmatched later on with the Lumber Mills and Industry especially. We will be kind of growing rich. But Industry will also give him the chance to spam more Elven Wood, you know. So we want to be in a dream world able to cover his next Elven Wood, but we can't. We still need a whole power point. Like, I, I, I'm not sure if the crossbow man start was... Oh my goodness, Faramir. And he one-shot me! Faramir! I need better eco, man. <laughs> I'm so poor. I wish I could recruit Lourdes, but I can't. You know, I don't have the money for it, man. Bite, 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 bite. Cancel, 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 cancel. Okay, cancel it, okay. Sometimes the buildings need Aegis to build, you know? So Berserkers. Like, he stopped spamming for a second. It's good for me. I have, like, two settlements. I wish I had, like, the third one. Then with the third Lumber Mill, we have, like, more wood bonus, giving us the chance to fill up the base or the castle, rather, in a much feast, uh, faster way. Still need multiple furnaces. Not sure what he's doing, if he's creeping or not. I mean, we couldn't see any of the map until now. We are only de perma-defending. Now I want to creep, actually. You know, I want to use my Berserkers, get one more. We can use War Channel on them, and we want to creep to get at least more power points, you know? So we're gonna have like four berserkers creeping the work layer bottom right corner. And maybe it's gonna be good. Close to industry. Close to industry. Like we are playing so slow. Like he has at least like three settlements being pretty much. And he has a Boromir to level five. Are you. You gotta, you gotta be kidding me, man. Oof. Okay, so. Let's go. Let's creep. Let's hope that we have still some time remaining. I mean, he has no upgrades yet, so it's good for me, kinda. If I would see upgrades, I would just potentially be dead in a second, because I've, I'm, like, far away from getting to Armory. I need Lourdes also. I need Lourdes. Desperately. Oh, man. Yeah, we need, we need Industry, boys. We can't go for the Tainted Land. We need Industry. Oh, please. Nah. Bottom is annoying. Can we creep this? Need Lourdes, need Armory. Maybe I should go for Saruman, but I, need, I think I need Armory because he has Faramir. Faramir is one in a row. It's a big chunk on Saruman. So we need, we need combos. The problem is that even if we go combos, we also need Palantir because his Boromir is level 5. He has the Horn of Gondor. And he has also leadership from Boromir, which we don't have from Lourdes. So, the second Warchant goes off, his army will have more leadership than mine. And for that reason, we need to outspam him. And there are also two Elven Woods randomly on the map. Luckily, he doesn't know that we don't have Tainted Land, so he's scared to use his third Elven Wood. And Lourdes basically deals zero damage to upgraded units. Watch this. Like, we need to shoot them like what? 10 times to kill one soldier. 
If we could get level 3, we could kill Boromir, by the way. Remember the Carnage? When you activate it, it will also grant Lourdes resistances to knockback. So basically, Boromir can't knock you down when you use Carnage, you know? Look how tanky the soldiers are, actually. Heavy armor busted. But it's a 4v1 with situation. Um, excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? What is this? <laughs> he has four combos, even one of them with Ranger with bottom leadership. Are you kidding me, man? I mean, okay. Kind of makes sense, though, because he was creeping the whole top side, you know, and he had like a free early game. My eco was messed up. His eco was phenomenal. Now he's coming. Like, zero person chance I can defend this. I played this so bad. I wish I could remake this game. Like, I believe I could win this if I my start. I I made a horrible choice, not with the crossbowman, but I think. Oh my goodness. Okay. You know what? GG I played. I don't want to talk about this game. No, let's not. Let's pretend like this game never happened. Okay. I'm gonna see you guys in the first game because this game this game doesn't exist. I'm gonna see you guys in the first game. Welcome to the first game, <laughs> Kappa, in which I'm gonna play Gondor. Against Isengard from Farad, okay? Let's do this! We will see the glory days of Gondor once more. I mean, knowing this matchup will give you the chance to just pick up the Elven from, the, from your spellbook right off the bat, you know? You don't even need to think about our power point choice. When you play Gondor against Isengard, you just straight up go for the Elven Wood. It's just like the go-to power point from Gondor's spellbook when you play against Isengard. Because Isengard can't cover this. The only faction that can do this is actually Mordor with his own Tainted Land. And remember, it's not about the armor leadership you get from the land. It's much more about the nullifying effect of the Elven Wood. So basically, as long as Uruks are on our Elven Wood, the Warchant won't work on them. And I'm gonna just like go for the infantry opening because I believe it's a very small map and soldiers gonna be a great choice. We can spam quite a lot of them, but I still like to go for Cav later on. You know, I, I wanna like, I wanna play with Gondor Knights, man. Like I wanna have like a mix of infantry and Cav. So okay, I I'm down if you trade with me. Okay, so Uruk there. Oh, this guy is much much smarter than me. Like, he captured the one which is farther away. So it's much more of a better choice. Let's capture this. I'm gonna use Elvin Wood here, actually, on this spot. But I took a lot of damage. It's gonna be a 1v1 situation, but maybe we can do it. We need a soldier. Okay, let's fight this. I mean, we won't be able to win this. He's also war chanting this unit, which is very smart. Maybe it was not the smartest move to actually you know, split my units like this, but it should be fine, hopefully. Okay, I mean, we have still one of his settlements. That's great, right? We have, like, four farms outside. That's amazing. We get, like, lots of resources, which will give us the chance to keep recruiting more soldiers. But additionally, we will also get enough money to build up the stable very soon. So, it's a very good situation. We need to build more farms. So, in a dream world, you want to have, like, four farms outside, two farms inside. Yeah, so, you get the full food, uh, food bonus. Reducing the price of your Knights of Gondor to the lowest amount possible. Remember, 6 is the cap. You can't reduce more than with 6 farms. I mean, of course, Uruks beat soldiers. Even without the Vorchan, they would have been able to beat this. No problem. Let's keep making more soldiers of Gondor. I like the soldier opening actually because it gives you much more early game presence, you know. Of course, it will delay your stable a bit, but I think it's a good treat. Look, look, you see he wanted to creep, but he needs to respect my soldiers. So the soldiers kind of dropping so much, putting so much pressure on your opponent, kind of making it impossible for Isengard to ignore them. And on the avenue, we can fight. Peregrine took, you full of a took. Go for the stable. More expensive now in the patch 2.2. Used to cost only 800, now 850. Okay, I mean, 
I, I, I know I can't win this fight, but it's all about, you know, disabling him from capturing his settlement, okay? So we're gonna, we're gonna turn this into a 2v1 situation. Remember, War Chant of him is on, on cooldown. We used it before, so we should be good. Keep fighting this. Great. Okay, we are almost level 2. We get level 2 here. Massive. Now we get to recruit the Knights of Gondor. Okay, beautiful. So we're gonna also be able to win this fight. We will lose one of the farms, but it's okay. We can always recapture this later on. No? And we get level 2 with the soldiers. Remember, it's like lots of power points which will help us to get to the Great Company. Okay? Great Company. When he will recruit pikemen, which he for sure will when he will see our knights. And we can summon the Great Company to deal with the pikemen. But it's been a long time since I actually played with horses the last time. So my micro, especially on, on a different host, is going to be kind of questionable. I will try to not lose any of the knights, but I can't promise anything. One power point collected. Amazing. We can also be able to win this fight. Almost level 2 soldier. It's even better. Now we can trample them and creep. So you want to be creeping. Uh, we know he has not many settlements around. And in this situation, which makes it the situation so good, is that we have like a mix of soldiers and horses. So we, while we can use the Knights of Gondor to creep the lairs, the soldiers can still keep pressuring the enemy settlements. Like a win-win situation. So we don't need to choose in between. We can do both the things, but we need to do simultaneously, you know? And I like that really a lot about the mix of Parax and Stable. Amazing. So that's gonna cause him to kind of recruit either Berserkers or go for the War Riders. I don't know how much money he has, but he shouldn't be that rich, you know? He lost quite a lot. Keep making more soldiers. Set waypoints. And we have a level 2 soldier over here. Amazing. Get on the Alvin Wood. Don't... Oh boy. Okay. Remember when I, when I was saying that I won't lose any horses? Oh, that was close actually. Dude, I'm so rusty in this game, man. Like, this game requires a lot of APM. Like, action per minute. You need to watch multiple things. Like, every second you need to switch your screen from one location to the other location. And if you don't, one bad trample into the pikemen will cause your knights to get crushed. Let's creep this one as well. Okay, so we are... Auriko is looking good. He has a berserker, but we have a level 2 soldier. Now, on one situation on the Alvin Wood, our soldier should be able to win this fight. No problemo. Okay, I need one more knight, and then my stable is going to be level 2. That will give us a chance to purchase the knight shields. And with the shields of the knights and then the forge blades, we can go and look for a base rush. When, when it comes to rush the Isengard castle, you need to be kind of fast. You don't want to give him too much time to get those furnaces to level 3, which will make the castle of Isengard much more durable. But I think our timing is like looking not too bad. We have also the power points now for the Grey Company. I would like to hold it until... We have the upgrades, you know? Like, huge cooldown. So, basically, you want to be smart about when and where to use it. Look at the minimap, boys. Like, we know Eisenhower has zero settlements. Um, it's about it's about to get zero settlements. He has war riders. He also used war chant. Okay? Let's not fight this. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Go back. I'm going to use the Alvin Wood right off in, uh, in front of the Uruk pit. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Hit the shields. Let's go back, my friend. Oh, man, I told you go back. Listen to me, man. Okay. I mean, no panicking. <laughs> I'm 1-0 behind. If I lose this, I will lose the best of three. I don't want to do this. No, I need to win this game. I have to win this game. Okay, buy the bleeds and then the shields and we should be good to go. Oh, can I get cloaked? No. Alright, so the play, the play is very easy. Like, right, we place the Elven Wood right, off in, the, uh, right in front of the Uruk Pit. Uruk Pit is our priority target as a structure. We need to try to destroy this, okay? So, and the Grey Company is going to be quite helpful. You go back to rest. Two of the knights are going to be enough. Let's summon the Grey Company right in the front. 
beautiful commit to the Uruk pit, destroy it as soon as possible. And when the Vorks are coming, we will switch to the uh, sword mode just like in the possible last possible second. It's going to make our units, as you can see, immune to trample. And they're also taking some revenge damage. Remember, that's all happening in front of our... In our oh, never mind. <laughs> but we destroyed the Uruk pit. Don't! I'm trying to micro, I swear. I can't. Go back home, level 4. Okay, we can keep rushing a little bit. We have also the heal from the spell book. That's good. We need to leave this tainted land though. Let's switch to the sword mode once again. I'm gonna now use heal on every one of them. Let's go. That's what you want to do when you use heal. Oh boy, I was really close. My level 4 almost died. I didn't pay attention. Bring more reinforcements. Please, please go back. I lost the whole battalion. Oh man. That's annoying. Yeah, we gotta do the same, boys. Watch this. Sword. Oh man. This guy is playing very good, actually. Farad improved a lot. Or is it just me playing extremely bad? Like, he's also paying attention to multiple different things simultaneously. And I don't like this. I don't like this, you know? He's not making it easy for me. He is not making it easy for me. But he's losing a Warcrider Battalion level 2. That's good for me. And what's amazing for me is the fact that he lost the Uruk Pit, right? It's very good. So, you know, you won't be able to produce any more units anytime soon. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Okay. But here's Warchant. We can disengage from this. All right. So, I think soldiers are going to be kind of useless at this point. We need to make sure to mix them up a little bit. So, we want to make a Tower Guard Soldier combination. Remember, in the patch 2.2, you can also combine them, which kind of makes them also stronger against wards. It can be trampled down. Keep that in mind. Like he's paying attention, of course. I mean, we have still a decent amount of map control, I guess. We have like four settlements, but it's going to be hard to keep that against the combo of Uruks and Vorks. So we know he has pikemen around the map control, right? Around the map. So we know his Uruk pit is down, so he has to make a choice. Will he defend his castle or will he try to keep his mills protected? Because he has only a limited amount of pikemen at this point of the game. And we need to force him to make a choice. So the plan is use the knights to pressure the castle. And then use the tower guard soldier combination to pressure the map control. And he can only protect one, one of them at the same time. He can't protect both. So send them to this location. Give them also forge. Dude. Okay. I need to stop talking, guys. I'm playing with fast units, you know. I gotta, talk, I gotta stop talking. I mean, we have Elvin Wood, but he will cover this. Let's purchase this. Keep getting power points. He doesn't demolish buildings. It's good for me. Heal is on cooldown. Keep that in mind. Okay. We should be good. He's also fighting for the for the MC. MC stands for MC Shanks. No, a map control. <laughs> oh man. Okay, that's good. We can fit, we can do this fight. We have full upgrades, you know. It's a 2v1 situation too. Okay, let's go for a sneaky base rush at the same time. Maybe he doesn't pay attention. I want to destroy his armory actually. It would be big if I can destroy it. That's a big money. He will lose. Not sure if he actually purchased all the upgrades yet. But we will find out. Oh, he demolished it. Okay. Maybe it's going to be better to save up for Ganav. Maybe that's going to be the plan. Let's keep destroying structures. The thing is, he has no combos. I'm, I'm, not, I'm thinking about skipping Gandalf and straight up going for the Eagles, which might be our win condition. But I think Gandalf is going to farm us power points anyway, right? So, should be good. The problem about Isengard against Gondor is, when you as Isengard don't have firepower, like combos, archers, range damage, 
then it's gonna be hard for you to kill Gandalf, even if you cripple him. Because he can hold the Visa Blast. Whenever you come close to him, he can just blast you away. So you need to have like two armies. You know, one of them eating pretty much intentionally the Visa Blast. And the, once the blast is over, then you can commit again. Remember Pikeman dealing great amount of bonus damage to Gandalf when he's mounted. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Okay. Let's fight a little bit. Let's trample the Uruks. Micro, 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 micro. Oh, he combined them in the last possible second, man. You gotta be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. My heal is on cooldown, but I can go for a base rush eventually. Oh, my great company is gonna be useless, no? Destroy this. Okay, beautiful. Oh, he used Palantir, so I need to be careful. I can run into my combos there. And then we can fight back. He didn't war chance, so we can fight this. And let's try to beat them on the Alvin Wood. Always fight where you have the advantages, okay? Here we have additional armor. And look, he lost a battalion of orcs. That's good for me. It's like over 1,500 he's losing, and he's losing another battalion. That's good, very good. Amazing. And we have Gandalf cooking in the base too. Let's get the white power point to make him stronger. And we just need to avoid Lourdes, because he doesn't have Lourdes right now, but trust me, the second he will see my Gandalf, he will recruit Lourdes. Without Lourdes, he can't stop my hero. I want to buy the outpost and make archer range there, actually. Let me do this. Outpost control. Like, we know he has, like, what? Maybe one settlement outside. <laughs> Light, though. <laughs> Light mode. Statue, well, 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 well. Combine. You are soldiers of. Con I wanna blast you. I wanna blast you so bad. Oh, he's paying attention to it. Yeah. Oh, man. You gotta be kidding me. Let's cancel everything. We're gonna lose the outpost. That's like a lot. I could go for the marketplace, actually, when I think about it. Be careful. Okay, we have three horses. And one swordman-pikeman combo can join us. So, the swordman-pikeman combo, of course, countering his pikeman. But his uruk-pikeman combo will counter my... So, the infantry strength from Isengard is the best in this game. So, Uruks, as you can, as you know, will beat soldiers, orcs, and also peasants. And pikemen of Isengard are, are also stronger than pikemen of Gondor, in a one-on-one -on -one situation at least. So, when you combine them, the Uruks and pikemen, they will be better than soldiers and tower guards. Statue, well... The second attempt in archer range behind. There we go. Let's not fight in front of the towers, you know, for no reason. So we can now turn and fight. Remember, Gandalf also giving us leadership, making our horses tank here. And you can see we don't take too much damage anymore from trampling into this. Let's kind of avoid his cripple, maybe. Let the front line fight a little bit. Keep Gandalf close to give leadership. And kill his pikemen. Like his pikemen are dying. We are getting more power points. It's good. Boromir can join the infantry army. I want to blast this. But maybe I don't need... I I'm going to use Istari. Die, Lourdes. It's going to chunk him. And a few more hits. And Lourdes is gone. Look, now we want to place the combo in front of Gandalf. So the pikemen can't reach out to him. And if he comes, if they come very close, I can blast them. Okay, just put the until the duration of the cripple is gone, then we can go for a base rush. Oh, oh, oh we can, don't run, don't run, don't run! I can blast this. Take this. Okay, beautiful, amazing. Now we are only two power points away from the eagles. I'm a servant of the secret fire, the field of the flame of Arnor. Dark 
Warcriders wanna wheel you. Flame of Saruman. Okay, we can use heal and go in actually. We don't need to go back. Let's go in. Boom. I can blast these combos. Okay, these combos of Isengard. Let's combine the units in the meantime. Cancel this. Go get fire arrows. Re okay, I didn't pay attention. It doesn't count. Smart move here from him. Dodging. We can deal a great amount of damage to his economy. Like killing those furnaces over and over again will prevent him to get them to level 3. Which would mean overall more durability, of course, but most importantly, it's more money. The more levels your resource building has, the more money it will drop to you. And at level 3, it's like a big boost. So level 3 is like the Bleed Kim, Spike of Eco from Isengard, and we lost the battalion. It's okay. You have still map control. That's fine. And this is like the proof that map control is everything, you know? Get this, get this. But I'm still... I'm, I'm not satisfied with my performance whatsoever, guys, okay? I could have played this much better. I would have played this much better like two years ago. But I'm rusty. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna chunk you. Warning arrow him, Faramir. Warning arrow him. Take this chunk. <laughs> you better run, lords. You better run. We're gonna place Boromir next to the combo, so we hope that he will get the one level he needs to unlock his leadership. Okay, so... Now we're gonna pick, put Ganov close to them. Remember, I, I don't see him having any any combos. So we are like a quarter away from getting to the Eagles. So we can summon the Eagles. With the Eagles, we can kill Lourdes. As there is no defense for Lourdes that can shoot the Eagles down. And once Lourdes is dead, Ganov can approach and have his crazy holy moly quacka moly moment. <laughs> we are really close, really close. Don't run into the bike, man. Don't run. Getting close there, close there. Put Boromir next to him. Boromir, do your thing. Almost at the Eagles. Almost, almost, almost. He's the tower. Okay. Alright. Now it's pretty much GG. Let's buy them banner. Go back a little bit. And now, you know what time it is. It is time for Pippin's favorite quote, you know, in the films. The Eagles. The Eagles are coming. Die, Lourdes. Warchan, but you can't shoot at me. Okay, he's gonna call it. GG, I mean, he played this way better than I did in the previous game. So huge props to him. And now we're gonna go and jump into the deciding game. In the best of three. The game number three. The score is 1-1. One, one. Wish me luck, boys. I wanna see my money, though. Gondor must prevail. Denator would be proud. <laughs> oh, we had like 7,000 more. I mean, he had still good money because it's Isengard. GG well played. We're gonna jump into the game number three, boys. Game number three. This time again, random against random. And the map is West Elmnet. It's Oh, we get to play with the Mordor faction. Grassy lanes of Rohan lying between the Entwash and the Eisen River. Mordor. I mean, it's a good map for Mordor, right? It's a very good map. It, Every map in which you can start with settlements that are behind your castle is a good map for Mordor. Because the thing, the way Mordor works is a turbo skilling faction, and if you have the settlements behind your castle, it will be hard for your opponent to reach out to the settlements. So for that reason, you always capture the settlements that are harder to reach. So we're gonna capture this too, and then we're not gonna capture the front one yet, okay? So we're gonna wait with this one until the reinforcement arrive. And Gollum is looking for some peasants in this case. Okay, so that's good for me because peasants are weak. And we can win the 2v2 situation and as long as Gollum is around and as long as we have Eye of Sauron active. But here's a hobbit there. So my goal here is to kind of block them until they can make it to me. So be annoying because I need a bit more time to get more orcs from the orc pet, okay? So getting the second orc pit, uh, getting the second 
Orc warrior to this location. Get a slaughterhouse first before anything. And wait until it's a 2v1 situation. So Gollum was keeping the one battalion busy. So around them and use I. I mean, the Hobbit is chunking, but it's fine. You can also go to rotate to the opposite side. I want to go now for Haradrim Palace. But let me capture this one first, actually. Let me capture this one for free. Again, it's going to make my structures also uh, cheaper because of the wood bonus. He's disengaging, trying to disengage, which he can because the Oryx are as fast as peasants. But as long as no damage dealt is dealt to my economy, I'm fine with whatever he wants to do, you know? I'm fine with it. Oh, let's bring Gollum. In a one on one situation, however, the peasants are stronger than Oryx. So basically, even with the Eye of Sauron, you will lose. Maybe Gollum can do some crazy stuff. Gollum, come on. I'm gonna lose this fight. Um, but my eco is looking good, you know? We were kind of stopping him from dealing economical damage to us for the first, like, two minutes into the game, which is amazing. And we have, like, two slaughterhouses and a Haradrim palace. With the Haradrims, we can also creep, right? They have, like, a long and safe distance, so you can creep. Like, what you want to do is you don't want to creep solo with the Haradrims. You want to have, like, a... Uh, Frontline, ideally orcs, because you can afford to lose them. They cost nothing but time. Can I? Are they gonna get level two after this one? Don't tell me that, please. If they get level two after this one, I'm gonna get tilted. Okay, Hobbit got cloaked. They got level two, but they got heavily damaged before. Can I win this? Please, orc, get level two. Nice. Okay. There's only banner left. I can, I'm gonna win this. Okay, that was really lucky from me actually that I got level two there. Amazing. Now you better run, my friend. You better run. All right. So we have Haradrim now. We're gonna get another Haradrim. Let's recapture the settlement. That's the only settlement we have lost so far. But remember, from creeping, we're also gonna get a lot of cash. That's even better for us. And place this orc right here just to make sure that he's not able to destroy this. He should have gone for this mill, by the way. Like he should go send like two peasants. To this mill too but he, did, he didn't like i can't defend every single mill at the same time so uh, uh, rohan's early game power is the fact that you can out spam any faction i have only one orc pit but you have like three four places in which you can recruit peasants so you can have like four peasants by the time i have like one additional orc of course peasants are not for free so you are not getting anywhere. <laughs> Mary, Mary Poppins. It's pressure. If good looking eco, let's kill him first before building anything else. Boom. Nice. Okay. Good. We have good eco. Let's creep this. We can also capture this outpost, make another orc pit, you know. Outpost control is the key to victory when you play Mordor, especially with Haradrims. Later on from the Haradrim Palace, we are also able to recruit the soldiers of Rune as a counter unit to the enemy Rohirrim. And then we have a couple of options. Option number E to go for like the safe option, which is the troll cage. So if like mobile units that can chase down the Rohirrim, prevent them from doing any damage to us. Or we can go for like the more greedy move, which is gonna be to rush a Nazgul. If it works, it's gonna be like very, very strong. Because I mean Mordor Gondor, I mean not Gondor. Rohan can counter this with Elvin and Legolas. But at this point of the game, it's much easier for me to get to 5000 than for him. Because almost everything that I'm doing is for free. My, my main army, orcs, are for free. So I just need to invest like a couple of hundred for Haradrims, which is absolutely fine, you know. You can also creep this, no problemo. Double furnace over here. Oh, it was close actually. Now we can creep the troll layers in the middle. Again, use the orcs in the front. Uh oh. Attack them, attack them. You can use Tainted Land here. I couldn't, <laughs> I'm joking. Chunk, 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 chunk. More orcs. And creep. So once we kill the troll, we can now go to the second troll there. He's coming to my outpost, but remember there are Haradrims on top of that, so he can't destroy this. He played this very slow, actually, you know? Like, I don't know why his stable was so delayed. Because he didn't, you know, rush any additional peasants, for whatever reason. Get the money, get the money. And then destroy the outpost. Okay, amazing. We are good. We are, you know, we are very good, actually. Very good. Two power points. We can go for industry to get even greater amount of money. 
boom and boom towering up oh he has human archers okay he give up on the okay <laughs> he give up on the horses the 2.22 kind of you know invented a new strat a new meta the infantry meta i still believe that you know the horses are not bad especially because of the current version the version 3.3 of the patch 2.2 the calf got some love got some buffs and if it's not gonna be enough you can buff them again so it's all about testing giving us feedback in discord if you guys playing yourself every feedback is very important and we can always i mean nothing is set in stone i want you to understand this we can always change stuff if it feels too weak or in reverse too strong i mean we are so rich like this is gonna be over no like what can you do against such a reckless seat look at the minimap do you guys see this or not he's gonna lose the rohirrim too hello get away there my friend hey, that's a very early nazgul not gonna lie that's a very early nazgul and that's what happens if you don't crash mordor early game that's what happens if you don't crash mordor early game guys nothing to say and add more than that one go for the troll cage we could even go for the second nazgul or the witch king but let's go for the troll cage let's not feed power points crush them all did you it <laughs> mordor beats rohan that's why rohan didn't want to play against uh, mordor in the films did you play guys i hope you enjoyed this best of three it was my third series i was able to win all of them the first game i was the first time i was able to win against zemix in the score was 2-1 in my favor and now the, in the third series i'm able to win against Swarad, also 2-1 in my favor but you can see the games are really close and the question is is it because of me getting rusty or is it because of the opponent getting better you guys let me know in the comment section down below thank you for watching i hope to see you all in the next video until then take care of yourself keep hitting like a track and as always stay beyond standards what peace out boys can't even talk anymore <laughs>